Hey, are you all right with that? Yeah, fine. You load these, yeah? Yeah, two more to go. <laughs> it's all happening as usual. Welcome to a brand new challenge, Tommy Walsh. Now, this challenge brings us over to South East London, to Lewisham, in fact, and you may have noticed it's on a very steep slope, this site. Now, when these houses were designed and built, they were built with that in mind. In actual fact, they were built on stilts. Now, there lies the clue to this challenge. All right, Al, how many more? Come on. Cheers. Now, I want to ask you, is this Lewisham <laughs> or is it Peckham? It's Lewisham. Can we not say Dulwich? <laughs> oh, Dulwich. Oh, you don't want to say Peckham, Delboy country? No, I'd rather say Dulwich. Dulwich, Delboy. <laughs> right, now, this is John and this is Emma, and of course, you know Big Al. Uh, this is a really, really interesting house, of which I'm going to show you a bit more later on. But I think, John, what we need to do now is get straight into the challenge. Make a move, yeah, absolutely. Put that tea down. Now, you wait, because you haven't seen this. In mm -hmm. here... Now, this is just a... Storage space, really. That's it's, right. It's up on stilts, and there's just loads of room under there, so it's just been used for all sorts of stuff. You can see the, mm. the lawn mower there. Mm. Yeah. So, let me show you what we're going to do with this storage area. It's unbelievable. Now, <laughs> watch your head. Have You're you probably... I bang my head on that spot. <laughs> That's the first time that you're banging your head on a frame, isn't it? <laughs> right, just come through here, Al, because this will lead us. We're on the edge of the Holy Grail. <laughs> and this is it. Well, you've got to use your imagination, of course. I'm doing my best. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a room. Uh-huh. If we can excavate some of this, put a concrete floor in here, and then create a room. I know it's a bit strange. <laughs> now, the idea is to maybe a wall of glass here, a wall of glass at the front, and then a stud partition there, and a block work partition at the back. And we really just want to make it into... Livable space, usable space. Uh -huh. okay. And we've got also, we've got an old sort of spiral staircase that came out of the house originally. This been is installed. escalating, this is. Yeah, I know. But it's going to be a spiral staircase in a corner that takes us up to the first floor. There's a lot of work here. I know. And on that note, we better get started. Dr Kildare, look at you. Oh, I don't know. Well, we've got just five days to complete this challenge to make a brand new glass room beneath the main house. And there's a lot to do. Here we have. You don't want to disturb their wildlife. Uh, but, oh, there's another one. Oh, there's a bigger. This one's a toad, isn't it? Huh? There you go, look. Here's one, an Olympic toad, look. You got him? Yeah. As he happens, take him round the back, cos right over in the corner there's this big hole, so you could go and have a bit of toad in the hole. Yeah, there's a barbecue around there as well, isn't there? Easy. <laughs> All this cladding has got to come off, so there's no better place to start than on these short pieces here. And Tommy's the other side. All right, Tom. Yep. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? It didn't, no. Seem to have got the hang of that. Yes, well, I think that was all right for this piece, but we want to be a little bit more cautious with the other two sides. We want to retain some of this in case we need to reuse it on the back. On the back, yeah. I think so. these are the better boards. So if we can save them. How did you come to that conclusion? I just thought I'd say it. <laughs> Now, this old glass that's been stored underneath here presents us a bit of a problem. Now, to move old glass is very dangerous. I nearly lost a leg when I tried to move uh, an old shop front all in one. Old glass gets very brittle, and it can just go ping like that and shear off to form dangerous shapes. Just missed the calf of my leg by about a quarter of an inch. But the advantage of us being in London doing this job, I can call on a few of my friends. Now, my mate Graham and his boys, he's a glazer. And he's going to agree to come down here. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to phone him up. And he's going to agree to come down here and move this glass for me. One close call is enough. Yeah, 
I think we might denail this, Al, because we might use some of this for the shutter, you know? Oh, I think so, yeah. Nice piece of timber. Mm. Would you want these dirty great big lumps of concrete in your room? No, I wouldn't either, so I'm going to neaten them up. I've put a pencil mark around here, and that's where I'm going to diamond disc cut through the concrete. And I'm leaving enough concrete so that I don't damage the integrity of the structure. Well, we've cleared all the clutter, yeah. opened up the space, taken down all the walls. What do you think? Looks fantastic. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Never realised there's so much space down here. Do you really like it? Well, not quite at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Like well, a long, I was, long way to go. But. <laughs> well, well, I was going to suggest a couple of shortcuts, actually, you know, because everyone talks about this sort of outside room. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, like the garden, they call it the outside room. Well, we could quite easily do an outside room here without any walls. No. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I want walls and a door. I know, and we both know why you need the extra space. Mm -hmm. But we want everybody to know why. Well, in about six months' time on Christmas Day, John and I are going to have our first baby. Ah, oh, lovely, isn't it? Bless, isn't it? <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Now, I've got to tell you, that's the reason, really, why. Well, apart from it being a fantastic house and an outrageously difficult project to do, but that was the one mm. re main reason that swung it for us to come and do this challenge for you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Mm. But we will come back to check. There better yeah, be a baby here. Be. And right. he better look like you That's two, otherwise it'll be true. You can't borrow one just to fob us off, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> this is the wooden shuttering for the concrete footings for the garden retaining wall. That's all the shuttering done. Now, that's going to contain the concrete raft we're going to use for the floor of this room. And we brought it in line with the actual building. Um, now, Al's made a terrific job of cutting down these concrete caps here. That one and that one. Perfect. And all we'll have to do then is dress round what's left. Then we spread the hardcore, break it down, and put the concrete in. Lucky I ain't got a watch on. Yeah. It does look easy, but it isn't. <laughs> Don't spill any, John. <laughs> Flick your wrist. That's it. Do you still think this was such a good idea? <laughs> Tell Alan to knock it up quicker. It's all right for him. He's got the easy bit. That's it. Up she goes. That's effectively the concrete undercoat down. Now we've got to put in the reinforcing still. Is this the far end? Yeah, that's far end. If you go right into that far corner. Yeah. I'll bring another one in. I'll have it over this side. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're going to have to say goodbye to you now because it's been a long day, the light's beginning to go, but we're going to have to actually stay behind and finish this floor because that must be done tonight. And hopefully we'll see you on day two when we'll be working a lot shorter day. More muck! First mix of the day, young man. Lovely. Whee, slow down, Tiger. <laughs> Just stick some on it. Welcome to the second day of the challenge. 
Now, the first day was problematic. We worked so late that the, we were working under the stars, weren't we? Yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah. But we've got the floor finished, as you can see it's done. And now today, second day, yeah. we're going to start the build proper, aren't we? We are. That's your load of muck there. I want to go and get on with some timber work now. So I'm going to disappear over there, and if you need me, just give me a yell. OK, mate, off you go. Now, as this is a retaining wall, it's going to hold back the garden, really, effectively, and all the rain from washing this stuff down onto our new building. I've, I'm laying these blocks, these concrete blocks, on the flat. That means you get a nice, thick wall, which is going to be very strong, and it's very easy to lay. I'm also going to tie into this old concrete here with these tie bars. So I'm going to do one more course of blocks, then I'm going to lay a paving slab on the top and make it a bit of a seat, effectively. Finish it all off. Then... I'm going to start laying the blocks on the actual room. See this great long piece of timber here? It's a setting out rod, and all my measurements for the windows that I've got to make are on this piece of timber. And it saves me going all the way down this hill and round the site to pick up the measurements when I'm making the windows up here. So everything's to hand, all full to scale. Should make life a bit easier. I'm putting a course of split blocks right the way through. They're going to form a sort of raised lip in order to keep the frames away from any moisture in the ground. On top of that, we're going to put a damp course, we'll isolate the moisture, and then we put the frames on. No, there's going to be problems here, mate. It re really is, yeah. Um, what we might have to... We're going to... That's about, well, 100 mil out. Yeah, well, like, see, when this was all cladded before, I couldn't see where this, this wall impinges right into the space. Let me try and explain. We have a problem. Now, you may have heard me say many, many occasions, always measure twice and cut once. Now, that's a very good rule, isn't it? Good guy. It is, yeah. But the only problem with this program is, you see, we don't really have the time. When we come and look at a challenge, we can't unpick it and open it all up and see if there's going to be any problems. They normally find us on the first morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to pre-order this glass because it takes a week to actually order it and have it made. So we worked out the sizes of the glass above, taking 10 or 15 mil off to allow us a bit of play. But because this concrete retaining wall here actually impinges into this space because the building's out here and this concrete wall the glass panel that i've had the double glazed unit the expensive double glazed unit that i've had made ordered upstairs will now no longer fit so that's redundant we've also got a problem here because we've got a steep bank running down so if it really rains heavy we've got water wash that could come down here. Well, we can make a nice wall on the inside, but on the outside, we've got to stop any water coming in. Where, where did this phrase water wash come from? What's, wa what's, what's, what's water wash? Water wash? Is that a Mount Mowbray term? Well, it's rain? when it comes down fast. It comes up with these... Eh? It's another language, he, you know, he, talking to he him. He just loves my phrases. I know you do. Water wash. Well, he's not... You're not lying, actually. We do have a problem, because if it rains heavy and there's no guttering on this building. So all the rain that comes down and hits the roof drops straight down either side of the building and then with here there could be a serious ingression of water. Oh! Not no, water wash. You've read that off a plan, ingress. <laughs> that's not one of your words. <laughs> it is one of my words. You behave yourself. <laughs> so now what we've got to do to get out of this problem, we're gonna, I'm going to have to shut that, put concrete in there and build a wall to stop the water coming in and throw it round here. Then we'll have to build another wall inside. And insulate it. Yes, and also put a damp course in it, so it's a drywall. And last and most difficult, where's my phone? I'm going to have to go and phone my mate Graham and give him a surprise, surprise.
Hello, can I speak to Graham? Hello, Graham. How are you? All right? Graham, we've got a problem. This framework that I'm making here is actually going to be the wall that separates the new room that Tommy and myself are making and the underfloor area. Now, when all this is made up, me and John will just carry this in and rear it up into position. Too, right? right on cue. Thanks, John. Right there, mate. Yeah, if you can line it up so that it's the same, same amount of blocks off yep. as this one, okay. and then I'll come across and get that screwed up in a minute. And what it means, it means that one of the glass units ain't going to fit. A bit faster, a bit faster. Now start pressing on because you'll go into this end grain. Right. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that too far? Oh. Have I ruined it? I'm getting really upset now. Really upset. Cheers, mate. You're an absolute champ. Thanks a lot. OK, speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. What a sweet man. We're in trouble. See, that's the thing about me working down here in London. I can call on my friends to dig me out of a very deep hole. And he reckons now, normally it takes five to seven days to get one of these double glazed units made because they're tough and glass. And he reckons he's going to pull all the stops out and he'll have it ready for me tomorrow night. That's what I call service. I love the house now. Having very traditional tastes in houses before, this is sort of, I can't imagine not living here. We'd have to build something like this somewhere else, I think, if we moved. I suppose it's like living in a big holiday home uh, because it's so light and with all the wood, it's just really nice and relaxing. It feels like you're in the middle of the countryside rather than being in central London. And we're only 10 minutes away from sort of London Bridge, so it's coming back to a little oasis of calm. This is going to be the nursery. I don't like decorating, I like DIY. I did all the electrics, rewired them all, because um, John's useless. I hate me for saying it. And I've never gone out with anyone who's just kind of put up a shelf before. But um, we end up bickering and I just end up doing it then, because it just makes more sense than having to watch him struggling. Things. But yeah, hopefully you pick up lots of tips and um, maybe some plastering tips as well before I go on my course. I think if they were looking for an extra person on the team, I'd love to join them. I can do a bit of plastering and, and different things. Um, working in an office every day, it's really nice not to... be really nice to be outside rather than sort of stuck behind a desk. It'd be really fantastic. <laughs> Plus, it'd be really funny. I could tease them all day, then. That's it, John. Thanks, mate. Right, that's that section of the wall all done. All we've got to do now is put it in position. Ooh. Ooh, I, mean, I think this is going to be too heavy for me and you. Tommy! Give us a lift, mate. Right, where do you want me? In the middle? Yeah. What I'm going to do is walk it down the hill and then go back down the path right. and then uh, try and feed it in from that end. Right. OK. Come on, John, you've got a lift. I'm going to give you some extra cereal in the morning. Right then. Over there. Ooh, it's gonna be tight. Are you ready with this? Yeah. Right, so that's about it, mate. As you go, just flick it off the shovel sideways. Like that. That's it, you get it in the bucket that way. There you go. I can see you've done lots of this sort of work, haven't you? <laughs> what do you do for a living? I'm a journalist. Are you really? No comment. Right then, John, what we've got to try and do with this frame is get this side here uh -huh. about level there so that this little cutout goes around those pipes okay. until the plumber comes. OK, there's a little mark on the floor somewhere. Oh, yeah, gotcha. There it is, look. There. That's it. Good job that fitted. Right. That's the base done. All I've got to do now is to lay some paving slabs on top of there, bed them in, and that's that layer complete. That's it. That's the point in finish at last. We ain't done too bad, really. I mean, we've picked up, we've gone back on schedule, and that's because we worked so hard last night and so late. 
But there is a payback for that. I think I actually caught Alan asleep three times uh, today. Hey, hey, hey. No, not having any of that. I seem to remember at lunchtime somebody stretched out on the back, sunbathing, counting Zs. Well, no, you misunderstood what was happening there. See, my physiotherapist said to me, because you pick up so many great big blocks, you need to lie down and stretch your back at least once a day for ten minutes. That old chestnut, eh? Well, it's not chestnut, it's me back, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm going to take you down to the pub and buy you a beer now. You've worked hard. Thank you. So join us again soon for day three of the challenge and see what treats we have in store for you. Come on in, big boy. You say all the right things. Hi. This challenge has brought us to Lewisham in South London, where we're creating a glass room underneath a fascinating house on stilts for homeowners Emma and John. Welcome to Challenge Tommy Walsh. It's the start of day three. I'm building stud walls, three of them in fact. Yes, and I've got a really difficult job today because I've got to set out all the front elevation which is making the frames that are going to actually hold the glass. And I don't want to make any mistakes at all. Talking of mistakes, I seem to remember one on the corner of the building the other day. Oi, I heard that. Now the shower has been in place for a couple of days and the concrete's cured enough to strike it. This is complicated, you see. Now, I'm, and I really could do without the intrusion, but I understand why you're here. But what I've got to do is make sure that I measure out all these timbers accurately because I'm actually making up now that front frame which is going to take the glass. Now, I would like it all in one piece, but I'm afraid it's going to be too big, so I'm going to make it in the two sections. And I've got to get it spot on because there's only a, a very, very small margin allowed for error. And I think I've already used that one up. I've got to go all the way down the hill for me knife, it's in me pouch. This design and building concept was the brainchild of an architect called Walter Siegel. And it's basically just a self-built timber-framed house. Now, the reason why it was so successful on this steeply sloping site is because the house can simply be put on stilts. These houses were um, built about 25 years ago. It was a patch of land which the council couldn't build on because it was so steep. So they've offered it up for uh, development for um, uh, sort of private self-build. And then uh, Walter Siegel came up with the design plans for it and then they were built by a lot of people, a lot of families who lived in the, in the street. My dad and I were looking for a house. Um, he was helping me house hunt. And he saw this in the back of some free pages that he picked up in a cafe and decided to put an offer in without asking me, even though I was buying it. And I came around in the evening and initially I really didn't like it at all. Um, I'm quite traditional, I quite like traditional stone construction, Victorian cottages, different things. But living here now, I can't imagine living anywhere else. Uh, it's the most amazing street to live in. The most the loveliest houses, aren't they? And they're just so different and nothing like we've ever seen. So my favourite is the, the downstairs because we've, we've taken a wall out um, and that's just created this massive living space. And then we've um, had a new kitchen put in as well, which is kind of open plan as well, which sort of looks out onto the living space and that kind of makes it very welcoming and also, you know, inclusive. Especially the street we live in, we have so many of the neighbours popping around in the evening, all the, all the kids come round to eat, so they love that. Right, that's the last screw out. Now, this is one of the little treats I told you about. This could look like a piece of modern art, a bit of sculpture, special by Tommy Walsh and Mr. Alan Hurd. But we're going to turn it over and lay it out. On the floor? Yeah, now I want you to roll it to me. To you, right. Yeah. It shouldn't be too hard, we're going downhill. Easy, easy. Aha. Uh -huh. And one more. 
Right, careful. You got it? Yeah. Right. Now, that's the correct way up. So, that's one of the window frames, OK? We put it out on the floor and the other one next to it. Yeah. And then we'll have the complete frame and then we'll put it in position, yeah? Right, OK. That's it. <clears throat> Well, that's it. Well, it's an absolutely perfect fit out here on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it in place and fingers crossed. But before it goes in, we need to whack in some lead flashing. This will stop any water getting into our new room. All right, Tom. All okay. Slide it to me. Alan Hurd has dressed all his lead. And now we've got to put these frames in tonight. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Mr. Hurd, that's a good fit. It is an all. Yes. Very good fit, that is. Where's my persuader? I'll give it to you. First, I'll just tap it, tap it in line. You've got about, oh, right, four or five inches to knock it back. That's You're... it. Is yeah, that it? Are you sure? It. I'm positive. Right, let me just tap the top over. It's got to... Oh, hang on a minute. It's got to fit against that knob. No, you've got a bit more to go now. Oh, I, was really? old, I was holding the wrong knob. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Bot on. Right, gently. Right, that's at the top. Can you give me the persuader over there, John? What do you call this, a knockometer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that? <laughs> Perfect. Well, guys, according to my calculations, which I've taken a lot of time and trouble over to get them exactly right. Um, we think that the staircase will emerge somewhere around about here. OK. Which is really a nice aspect with these two big, you know, panes of glass here. Mm. Mm -hmm. And also in close proximity to the staircase, it's going to take you to the next floor. Perfect. Sounds fantastic. You planned that. <laughs> it's just a natural flair for design, you see. Um, so, what I would like you to do, if you don't mind, is move some of this furniture out. Yeah. And then we are going to cut a circular hole in the floor. Okay. okay. And then when we go home tonight, whatever you do, don't forget it's there, you know. <laughs> now that we've established where the staircase is going to go, all I've done is got myself a simple piece of wood, drilled a hole in it, popped a nail through the end, and then at the other end, a hole to receive my pencil, and that's going to act as my compass. So, pop, pop the nail in the hole, like so, and then follow the compass end round and start to mark. Until, of course, you break the end off your pencil. <laughs> That's it. We've cut through. All right, then, Tom. <laughs> well fixed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hurd, I presume? Yes, Mr. Walsh. <laughs> oh, I had to get away from them kangaroos down here. <laughs> We've finally come to the end of day three. There's only one job left to do. And thankfully, John has volunteered to do that while we leave. John? Now, I'll just explain to you briefly. I've got to say, you looked absolutely stunning in white. It's definitely your colour. I think it is. 
Yes, oh, nice 12, yes. We'll see if you can do that by the end of the evening. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what you've got to do, okay? Okay. Now, that is the black waterproofing that we're going to apply to the floor. These are two coconut brushes, uh -huh. okay? And that's a bucket of water. Now, you keep them in there, the brushes in the bucket of water. Then you take one out, shake off the excess water. Right. And then you dip it into the black stuff, all right? Give it a twirl. All right, now, we start in this corner, so in we go. Now, you want to make sure you get it up, up the wall underneath the lead to make sure you've sealed that seam, you know, yeah. where, yeah. where the uh, blocks bond to the concrete. Right. I'm back in now. One other thing. You want to let this dry for about three, about three hours. Make sure it's dry to touch. Then come on and give it a second coat. We need two coats on tonight and then one very early in the morning. So that's the three coats done. OK. Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. Lovely. Well, we're off and we'll see you tomorrow. Cover now. He worked well today. I'm glad enough glad we got him to do that because I hate doing that job. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you a pint. All right, welcome back to Lewisham. It's day four of the challenge. And we've made good progress so far, mainly because we've worked very long days. We certainly have. We've got the stud walls in position and the windows and the slabs and the block wall. No, the windows are not in yet. We've got the window frames in position. And we've got the concrete floor down. We've got the retaining wall and the path. So on the whole, generally, we're in front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the hole, yeah. Well, oh, that's a good one. Of course, we've cut a hole in the floor above, so we're going to put a spiral staircase in. Well, it's actually beginning to look like a room now, so do you like what you've seen so far? Yeah, it's fantastic. Looking forward to the windows going in and the back of the wall. Well, they're going to go in later on today with a bit of luck. Now, it's, uh, something has been brought to me notice. We brought in Mickey a friend of mine who's a professional electrician to do the wiring and the lights and power in that new room of yours. Mm -hmm. But he thinks that it, you should have a full test um, and installation report on the whole electrical installation in your house. Right. Because you've got your consumer unit outside the building on the wall here, which is not really the correct way. Okay. So, you know, you'll have to have a new consumer unit put on the inside, so you might, have a, might as well have a full report and test done at the same time, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the electrical works correct. Thank you, Tommy. I think I deserve a cup of tea for that. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, is making tea. <laughs> I like to hear. I'm on the corner piece of this lead work, and it's a little bit tricky, because as much as it's got to get the water away from the house, it's also got to look reasonably tidy as well, and that's what I'm trying to do just here. The first cut is a straight cut into the corner, and then the next cut is 45 de degrees up to meet that corner. And you pull the waste bit out, you fold one over, like so, and then the other one down over the top of it, and it all traps it nice and neatly. Now that we've cut all of the floor area away in the circle, I'm going to remove all of these joists so that I've got a blank canvas to start again for the trimming out of the new staircase. All I've got to do now is remove the excess timber ends here and then I can start building out the new trim area. Use all the off cuts, cut them to fit. Doesn't matter if they're jointed. While we carry on, my mate Graham and his team are sorting out custom made windows for the new room. First of all, the glass is cut to size. Then the glass gets a good old wash and they can make sure there's no imperfections.
Ready? Mm. Yeah. Because this house is built on stilts, it has these braces in place to stop any scissor action. But... Have you ever been an air hostess? <laughs> <laughs> but because we've got the frames in place now and also the back stud work, I feel that we can take these out now and then put the spiral staircase into place. There is, however, a certain risk which he hasn't explained to you. The window frames are in place but not the glass. And it's the glass, when it's standing vertically, that makes it very strong, because those square edges are very strong, and you can take the, these braces off once the glass is in place. But he's impetuous, as usual, and we've got to do this before the glass goes in. It's on your head. Well, actually, it's on both heads. Moment of truth. <laughs> you pass that, don't you? There we have it. I suppose today is the fourth day of the challenge with only one day left to go, and I'm slightly worried that <laughs> there are loads of different tasks left to do. And Tommy keeps adding extra bits on because um, he's obviously doing a really good job. But it's going, I and mean, I think people are a bit scared around him that uh, this list of things to do by tomorrow is growing, sort of never ending. But uh, I kind of have faith in them at the moment. I think John's worked really hard and hopefully picked up quite a lot of uh, different skills from Tommy. I'm hoping to put, him, put this to the test next week with various things I want to do around the house, which he's refusing to let me to do now I'm pregnant. Um, but I think he's very tired, considering this is our week off, theoretically. I think we're probably going to need another week next week to recover from all the work. Yeah. Yeah, now, this is a very handy little tip if you're putting plasterboard walls up. Now, as you can see, you cut it slightly short of the ceiling, and then you get a piece of wood, a flat piece of wood like that, and you put it on a, another scrap piece of wood, like a wedge, and then you use it to push that up like a foot pedal, and it squeezes the board up to the ceiling, and you've got your hands free to fix. My DIY skills are poor, to say the least, and that's, that's being really optimistic. Um, Emma's is brilliant. Emma's very good, and she, she gets on with the projects and stuff, and so I'm a pretty good labourer, so she orders me, orders me around. But this really was a step too far. This really was a big, big project and a real big challenge to, uh, to turn something like this dead space into, into, into a room. So we thought, let's get the boys in. John and Emma have these sliding patio doors that separate the kitchen from the conservatory area. But now they're not needed, we're going to put them down into the room we've created and they should look fantastic. One, two, three. That's it to me. Yep. That's it. That's it. Now what I'll do, if I can have it just for a second, mm -hmm. and then I roll it round. Arms. That's it. That's all the plaster all done. The last screw in. All that's left now is to put the windows in at last. Oh, where's that glass? Right, come on, guys, this way. Oh, I'm not going to help you carry it because now in my life I'll probably drop it. It's a handy bit. Yep, it surely comes in. At last. That's the first one in. I'm the sewing up man. What I've got to do is put these blocks onto the frame and screw fix it temporarily into place to make sure these don't fall out overnight. <laughs> On reflection, do you think this is a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, that's it. 
Sorry. Let's stand back and have a look. We've been so close to this all day, I haven't had a chance to have a look. Now, with the glass in... Oh, it looks fantastic. I bet you're proud of that, aren't you? I am. So did must you. Well done, yeah. I always feel better when the glass has gone in. <laughs> yeah, so I feel better when the glass has gone down, actually. <laughs> it's been a hard day. We've done loads of work today. Um, we've got it all trimmed up and ready, to, ready for the final, final day. It is going to be a hard push, though. Yeah. You're going to have to join us for day five of the challenge. We've still got the staircase to go in, the doors to go in, and all the trimming and everything. Oh, the bits. The bits take forever. Yeah. But our two friends here, I phoned them up, and they're coming to do the plastering for us tonight because it's too dark, it's too late, and we're too tired. And on that point, I think... Go on, let's go. Let's go and get plastered ourselves. Welcome to the final day of the challenge. <laughs> We're in Lewisham in South London in a unique development of timber frame self built houses. Now, this job is creating a room under the house. Yeah, really unusual. Come and have a look and see how we're doing. Now, last night when we finished, it was dark. I didn't really get a great look at it, but. No. Oh, oh look yeah, at look. That. Do you oh, know what? Wow. I could take up a job as a designer, couldn't I? Yeah, you could. You could. Provide knuckle copy was above. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get started. It's looking smashing, that is. Well, it's going off dry already, Al. Yeah. They haven't polished it either. No. It's a nice it's finish, contract. actually, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, it actually it looks, looks like a room there, doesn't it? It does. But they've still got lots to do. Got the staircase well to cut, out, cut through the plasterboard. And put the staircase in. And we've also got to put the door in. We can two hand that because that's heavy. Yeah, sliding doors. Then we've got the, the, the lap boards on the outside. Yeah. And see the outside of these panes of glass? We've only got temporary blocks in position for those. So we've also got to change all that and put the proper trimmer on the outside. And I'm going to sort of replicate what's above, but only make a proper job of it because mm. that's a little bit tatty up there to say the least. Yeah. As you can see, there is one heck of a lot of work to do. So I think we ought to stop gabbing and get on with it. Right, OK, I'll tell you what we're doing, then. Come on, oh, we're going no, no, this coin. I'm no, not, no, 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 no. No, no. Heads or tails, you no, make I'm a not, team. I'm not playing. Yeah, that's right. Now, the windows have been put in on silicon mastic with temporary blocks. To make a more permanent job of it, we're going to renew the blocks and then line the inside of the windows with this pressure-treated timber to make them watertight. They need to be 175 mil wide, and these are 150 mil wide. I'm going to have to come up with a plan. So bear with me, cos I need some thinking time on this one. I've cut them all as well! Oh. All right, you've just come right on cue. What I've done here is prepared some grounds for the aluminium frame to sit into. This is the plumb one that I know spot on. So if you can give me a lift, we'll slide it into position, and fingers crossed, and the wind in the right direction, it'll fit. So this is the head of it, the head of the frame? Yeah, but the head isn't a fixed item, that's just something to carry the gap at the moment. For that. Yeah. Okay. Is it heavy? That's, well, a bit heavy for you and Manny your age. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Got to get that one in. Right, you have to tilt it just underneath those. It's not very heavy, is it? It isn't. It's real flimsy. Without the wood frame, it's nothing at all. The glass. And yeah, exactly. Just trying to relay the balcony because um, the wood was all rotten. So we're just working out why we've measured some incorrectly and some properly. We seem to have got the first five right um, and the next four wrong. <laughs> so. I might have to cut a few more and then use them as offcuts. This one has to be... Move that one along to the width. This one. I'll just show us how to cut it and we've obviously got those ones right. Um, I want to get it done ourselves and then pull them to show them what we've done. In terms of doing the house up, because it needs a lot of work, I make huge lists of essential things. Um, with which I ignore. Which John ignores. With weekends allocated to different works, which John ignores. Um, and then I just end up doing it myself. <laughs> But I, I quite like DIY. 
wouldn't, I've never really uh, attempted anything such large scale, you know, moving in here, realising how much work there is to do, what a big job it is. Better argue with the boss. I don't like doing it. And uh, I, I get bored very easily, but, but I like the results. And actually, if I stick to it, and I, I, I've learned a lot from Tommy and Al, Al and Reddy, because they, they really are stuck to it. And, and once you really put, put some effort and time into it, you can get great you know, results. So, um, I have high hopes for the future that we're actually going to get yeah. some more DIY done after they've we'll, gone. We'll see. OK, mate, I think we're the right way round. <laughs> I hope so. Well, no, I'll tell you what, bring her underneath there. That's it. Now we've got to feed the top in first. It's a memory from yesterday when I took it out. You all right with that? Mm. Up underneath that. OK, hook onto the track, back, and then slide back into that rebate on your side. Yep. Watch your fingers. Yep. That's got it. And then, one screw, look at this top here, should see it finished. That little bracket. Slides up as you tighten the screw up. It's nice that it's gone in like a hand into a glove, the perfect fit. Only the size nine gloves and size five hands. You don't half wax lyrical sometimes. I know. <laughs> right, and this one. Uh... Should be a poet, really, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. I should well, be a you... poet even though I don't know it. <laughs> you can stole my words then. <laughs> right then. Let's grab it like that. And then what we've got to do again is feed up into the top. Mm hmm. Keep your boot. Oh, you got They're steel not toe light, are they? No, you got I steel toe know. caps on. Yeah, but. Okay, so we've got to go up into the top, feed that over the track, and sit it on the rollers. That's it. Okay, now let's give it a try. Oh, lovely. Well done. Let me have a look. Oh, I've just got to ease that. All right, you do that while I have a butcher's. That's great. You know, there's something fascinatingly satisfying about. Taking, I don't know, a piece of redundant material and reciting it and reusing it, and it's just perfect. It's, it's as if it was made to fit. Well, well, it has been made to fit, you know. But it saved a few hundred quid as well. A lot of money, yeah. 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 On a sliding scale, I would say that saved... Sliding scale? Yeah, yeah, I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not even dr being drawn with that <laughs> one. <laughs> Give us a shout if you need a hand. OK. Well, I've managed to recycle those sliding doors, and I'm also going to recycle some of this boarding that we took off earlier on. I'm going to put it back on to the right-hand side of the sliding door. I've just got loads to cut to one length. Measure one, use that as your template, and then mark all the others off that one. Cladding, I'm finishing off the slabs that I laid on top of the retaining wall. When you're pointing paving, use a dry mix. That's three parts soft sand, one part cement without any water. Sweep it in, force it into the joints with your fingers, rub it over with a jointer and then sweep off the excess. Oh, and by the way, wear a pair of gloves or you might spoil your manicure. This is one of those boards that I've just been cut into length. All I've got to do is pop these on with the nail gun all the way up there and then they'll match in quite nicely. I've just finished the pointing and it's raining. True to form, you know, I think uh, we've been there before sometime. <laughs> That's the last one. And don't you think that looks a lot neater than it did? Really, really pleased with that. Now, we're going to line these windows now. What we have to do is take these temporary blocks off and put these new blocks on. These are small and the right size. So 
So we put these into place, and there's four to each side, and then we'll put the, the inner cheeks on, which will seal this window in. So what I've done to make sure that we get it balanced right, there's four blocks to a side, it's two metres high, that means five openings, so they're 400 centres. I've done that at this end, and I've done it at the other end. We just simply hook a string line up there, a chalk line, and... Put it onto there really tight and then snap a line. That gives us a perfect line. Now, you might say it's a bit stupid snapping on a chalk goes all over his shirt. But as you can see, it match colour. time to start setting out for the spiral staircase. If you remember, there was a hole above us here. Now, the plasterers have been in, plastered all this over, but it's actually helped me because I've got to find out where the centre of that spiral staircase is going to be. So I've marked out the centre up there, marked a hole, and then I'm going to drop this plumb bob from the top down to the floor, and that will mark the centre of where the spiral staircase is going to be. And when that's finished swinging, it will find the exact centre of the spiral staircase pole for all the treads that are going to drop over it. And I can mark it like so, like that. And then you bring those across, and that's the centre of the pole. I caught it, I caught that end with my hands, and I caught this end with my head. Oh, <laughs> it's, a it's heavy! It's a good job you were stood under there, isn't it? Yeah, well, it depends. On, <laughs> not from where I'm looking, it wasn't. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, right, all we've got to do now... Oh, that's, that's good. You know what that's done? That's allowed it to breathe the, the air, as Chuck called it. Yeah. Because oh, it's hot. Clammy there. in there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, so all we've got to do now is drop the pole onto that cross on the floor. All right, so this is where it's going to go. Yeah, we'll drop the pole down there and then I'll start lowering the treads down over it and get it fixed. There you go. That's it. OK. Lovely. Thanks, Em. It would be horrible if I dropped one of these, wouldn't it? <laughs> it wouldn't be good for you, let's put it that way. perspective from here across these stairs into the other stairs you know yeah into the spiral and up into the glass roof what color are they going to be in they're not going to be white are they no you're not giving them this out <laughs> no probably next silver black silver's quite contemporary so that could be good yeah. like a modern field down there with a nice modern radiator yeah Right, now then, thanks. That will go like so. And that should get bolted. Oh, down a bit further out in the middle. That's it, that should get bolted you there. It's exactly the same as the one I've got. Exactly. Is it? So obviously I don't go up and down it very often. That's it. Don't, don't strain yourself. <laughs> At least we've passed the first step of this. Well, I don't think that's going to fall down in Ori. So we'll line it up with that hole. That's about right there, Tom. Perfect spot, isn't it? Just there, where it's gone down into oh. the room. 
You couldn't want for a better spot. Lucky that brace was able to come out. Yeah. That would have presented a problem, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, Al, they're going to work out... Or a little bit of tweaking, they should work out perfect to, to step off, you know? Well, they're almost the same point at the bottom as they are at the top. So imagine you hadn't got this landing. So if you look vo vertically up now, it's almost in line with you, where you step off this quarter landing. Pretty good. See here, look. Now, you know earlier when I first cut those, those linings, I went, oh, they're the wrong size, so I had to think. I put my thinking cap on. And because they were slightly smaller than I wanted, I came up with what I thought was a genius idea. I then cut them. I made them even smaller, you see. So this is the cut piece, as you can see, off of there. So that was it originally. Cut it down and then put some glue on that off cut. So you put it at right angles to the face and then with the pin gun, we just align it. Work our way along to keep it flush. Now, these are the smaller blocks which I've glued and screwed to the main frame. And then this little piece here, I've scribed it top and bottom. And then that just sits over these blocks. And then we fix through and I put the other one on. We squeeze these up tight, clamp them up, and then fix them. And they're excited. we're going to screw fix them so that if ever anything happens to the glass, you need to replace it. You can unscrew them, take them off, and get the glass to replace it. But then, of course, it keeps this feature, this projection, going through. And that's the theme we're going to pick up, or they're going to pick up, with the rest of the building when they refurb it. are in this lovely spiral staircase and I've got to fit the handrail. Now, I've had to put the lights on because there's a storm of brewing and it's not between me and Tommy, it's outside. And guess who's in it? <laughs> it always happens to me. Now, I want to show you something and we've got the right weather for it. Down here, I didn't concrete this floor and there was a very good reason for it. If you look up now, you can see there's no guttering and the rain it's falling off the roof onto my head because I'm working here. See? So, because there's no drain and no guttering, it just drops into this area here. This is why I left it and soil alone. I'm going to fill this with gravel and then that's going to become what we call a French drain. Don't ask me why it's French, but maybe because it's simple. Who knows? But that's going to be the very last job before I hit the old frog and toes tonight. Get another one out. Yeah. Mm. I think on reflection, having this, this drain quite deep was a good idea. This is, it... what, this is what you call road testing it, you see? <laughs> see if it works. <laughs> oh, last barrel, that's it. Ready? Right there. That's it. Well, we've finally reached the end of our challenge in the pouring down of rain. And it's nice to have the use of a door, isn't it? Man? It is as well, yeah. They are crawling here before. This challenge has finally taught me something. This bloke is a complete lunatic. <laughs> I'll agree with that, yes. <laughs> I should never have agreed to this in the no, first place. No, you shouldn't. Well, we think it's been amazing, the transformation. Do you remember what it was like before we started?
Well, guys, it's finally complete. What do you think? I don't think I visualised it would be this amazing. No, no, I mean, to consider what it was before, that kind of junk space, it was just, this is brilliant with transformation, it's amazing. That's all it was, a junk space, wasn't it? There was no <laughs> room or anything. I couldn't believe it. We had a crawl in here, first of all. We only hands and knees. Yeah. Yes, and now you've actually got a door. And a staircase. <laughs> this has been a, nearly a challenge too hard for us. Yeah, it certainly has. But yeah. we do hope you enjoy the room. Thank you very Good much. Good luck for the future, as I said with the baby. Yeah, little baby owl. <laughs> <laughs> baby owl? <laughs> baby owl? <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be more of this. <laughs> Join us again soon. It's the end of this challenge. Before it was just this black hole, it's like a dungeon almost. Um, and to it to be transformed like this is just extraordinary. To, uh, also, the way it works with the rest of the house is just amazing. I would have never dreamed that they'd been able to do that. And hey, that's why they're experts. Since they left, we've had uh, oak flooring put in, which uh, will last a very long time. All the boxing ends being done around the windows. Yeah. We've had a radiator put in, decorated it all. We did that. <laughs> Bought some <laughs> furniture. Bought some furniture. Moved a lot of things downstairs um, from upstairs, a lot of the, the sort of TV and stuff. Um, they did, we, there wasn't actually very much to do once yeah. we left at all, uh, apart from the floor. Then we moved straight down here, I think. Mm. Haven't left since. The best thing is that they've really worked for the rest of the house. I'm looking at this now, it looks like it's always been here, so it's really nice. Uh, very nice to show it off to our neighbours. Yeah, they can come back if they want. We've got lots to do.